Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so let me check on this. Nadia, someone is trying to join. If you can approve uh, some in the waiting list. I mean, let's give one minute for everyone to join in completely. Dr. Ko Kang Siang, are you here already? Dr. Ko? Kang Siang, are you here already? Hi, Dr. Yong, I'm here. Uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, yeah, give us one minute. Okay, guys, I think uh, let's start. So, uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm more happy that you guys spend your weekend time with us today. And this is actually our third webinar that we have carried out. Uh, and we, in fact, received a very good feedback following for the first and second webinar. And then we get uh, some followers say that we should do this monthly. So we try to do this monthly. And again, today's topic is about how robots can improve hand function for stroke. And this is also the topic that actually uh, suggested by the audience, uh, by the stroke patient themselves, family member, physiotherapist, doctor, and so on and so forth. So for the upcoming webinar, if you have any topic that you want us to talk about, please uh, share your feedback. And then uh, our team will look into that and we will try to arrange up as long as it's actually related to rehabilitation, stroke, and I think uh, we should be able to cater uh, the talk. Yeah, um, so before I start, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Dr. Yong Chi Fai. I'm actually an associate professor at UTM. I'm also a co-founder for DF Automation and also Tech Care Innovation, I'm one of the members. I've known Dr. Ko for quite some time already, lah, quite long already. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, just a quick, some housekeeping for those that just join us and also for those that are going to join us for throughout this uh, uh, session, please mute your video, uh, sorry, please mute your uh, sound and also the video, we don't have to on the video at this moment. Uh, we're going to have a quick introduction at this moment, then Dr. Ko is going to have a presentation for about 20 to 25 minutes. And this presentation also uh, is a feedback collective from the audience. We can add a few more information in the presentation, like uh, the case study, how the robot can help, and so on and so forth. Right after the presentation, we're going to show a demonstration, a quick one as well, five to ten minutes. You can roughly see how a rehab robot works. And Dr. Ko is going to show that step by step. And right after that, we're going to have a question and answer. If all the time is right, we have a good 15 to 20 minutes uh for question and answer so here you can actually start to think of the question you want and you can already write in the chat box so at the end of the session i'm going to pick up the question and ask and of course you are most welcome to unmute yourself show yourself and ask question i mean this is all about interaction between each other lah. yep so that basically is housekeeping and also today's session and um yeah and now let me introduce you dr ko kang Seng, the important person of today He's a rehab robot specialist. He has a very vast experience in this field since he's actually undergrad, then his master and PhD on this particular topic. He has personalized, uh, developed some robot for the stroke uh, community. And also he also talked to and used other devices that he actually felt useful. He will put, uh, bring back to Malaysia and try to uh, uh, reach out to all other potential customer. Yeah. And again, he also has won a lot of award, award including the prestigious British Invention Award. And he is also the TechX speaker as well. It's uh, wonderful what uh, Ko Kang Siang has achieved. Lah. So for that, uh, let's welcome Dr. Ko Kang Siang for his presentation. And Dr. Ko, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Yong. Uh, a very good afternoon to all. So today I'm going to share about how we... Uh, use robot to help the patient uh, along the journey and uh, how it started actually. So um, at the end, I will have a demonstration on how it looks like. Dr. Yong, can you see my screen? Hi, yes, Dr. Yong, is my slide is okay? All right. Yep. Perfect. Great. Great. Let me start. So um, uh, I myself is a rehab robot specialist in tech care and I get a PhD in rehab engineering. So in the past, I've uh, been in the field for eight years already. To date, i published over 20 uh, research publications and won some innovation awards. So some of our solutions have been used in some countries, Malaysia, China, India, and other countries. 
So the story started when I was in uh, university. So top left, you can see that uh, that's when like 10 years ago, 11 years ago, uh, where I joined a Robocon is uh, Robocon means a robot contest. So it's an international competition. So every year we have a, a robot team to, we need to build robots and then to compete within the country and then represent Malaysia uh, to other country. So I'm in UTM and uh, that year we represent Malaysia to Egypt. So that year we also won the best design award representing Malaysia. And at that time we struggled a lot to build robots. You can see uh, I'm very slim and did not sleep much. So we spent a lot of effort to do that, to learn the skill, how to build a great robot. And, but the thing is after we come back from the competition, I realized that uh, we have the skill, but what can we do for uh, our community? And coincidentally, I managed to visit a stroke center uh, a few years ago. So at that time, uh, the right side is where I, that is the first time I visit a stroke center. And that's where I realized stroke recovery actually is very time consuming tiring and really need a lot of effort. And our community is uh, still using um, very basic tools. So what I think is we are learning in robotics in the universities and I think we probably can make use of our knowledge to contribute back to uh, stroke recovery for the community. That's how it started. Uh, and fast forward today, uh, 10 years later, we, been, uh, we are providing solution so TechCare is a human performance solution. We, the aim is to provide interactive, automated, and intelligent training solution. So we have for balance, for hand, for wrist, and other devices from uh, other countries as well for more high performance trainings. Today, our customer ranging from UK, India, Malaysia, China, and even in the uh, even in Thailand, right? Um, some innovation awards and then uh, features in some of the newspaper. All right, today topics I will talk about how we can uh, take the advantage of robot to help improve our hand function for stroke. And I know stroke affect a lot of uh, people and uh, hand function is one of it. Because of stroke, we lost our function to do a lot of things that we like to do in our daily life. Eating, drinking, uh, even opening a door, writing, seems easy for us before the stroke but after that it become a very very hard for us and of course the good thing is we actually can do rehabilitation to regain back our capability for that so the the key for the stroke rehab is actually uh we always refer to the neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is the concept where when we have repetitive trainings we will have our brain that is not damaged, is still healthy, able to reconnect itself to create that function that we need. And uh, the concept is simple, uh, very simple. The more intensity we have, the better the recovery of our function. So you can see the control group. This is one of the study they did. Um, I shared in previous webinar as well, because I think it's important for us to have a, a common understanding. And pre-rehab pre will be uh, not much, activation but after post rehabilitation we can see a lot of activation on our brain so when you ask the question whether rehabilitation or physiotherapy works or not and i can tell you today yes it works stroke rehab is actually work for us to help to recover our brain function and research shows that consistent is very important as well as high intensity a study shows that 400 to 600 repetition actually is needed in order for us to have effective brains changes and uh but to do that is a lot for every day we need to do 400 to 600 repetition and you can i would like to share with you that the stage of motor recovery after stroke so here we have six stage of recovery uh brimstone stage motor recovery so from stage one very flexy uh soft you will feel very soft after stroke start to have some spasticity a little bit stiffness and then the max spasticity, the stage three, is where is the highest stiffness. And that's where a lot of patients may be uh, at that stage and not able to move forward. And if we're able to pass that stage, we then can go forward to the uh, less spasticity and then improving the synergy. Then move forward to the next stage, we can be, have more control, coordination movement, and then 
a, a more complex movement. So this is how it looks like for a motor recovery after stroke. And so it's the, the rehab knowledge is where we will put the right uh, training exercise based on what stage you are. And that is the value of physiotherapies. So the challenging part is, yes, we know that it's already proven rehabilitation can help our recovery. The challenging part is actually our hand is very complicated actually. Uh, so uh, even hand itself has 14 joints and a lot of small muscles and fine motor skill that we actually uh, need to regain in order to do a lot of things that we wanted to do. And the challenging part is it needs a lot of repetition practice. And normally the hand rehab, it will take us the longest time uh, for most of the patient. So what can, uh, why it, I mentioned it take a lot of time? Because if you can see, this is a process. I'm going to show you this is a process, how we normally recover a hand function. We need to understand the process before we know how we can improve. So first, normally we will start with a uh, stretching exercise. Uh, if there is some stiffness, we will normally start with a manual. Uh, physio will start with a manual stretching. And then we do a passive facilitation. It's where we want to create, initiate the movement, what we call movement-based exercise in my presentation today. And then we move on. Once we have some little bit movement, then we can move on to functional exercise. Then uh, we'll be, then the move on is on the strengthening exercise. It's where we're we able to do the task, but then uh, we need to strengthen the muscles in order to continue to maintain that function at that level. But, and you can see that there's actually, that is just one of the movement. We need to go through these kinds of exercise. Uh, and imagine we need hundreds of daily repetition needed for every stage of our hand for effective motor recovery, for pinch, pinch and place, pick and place, for uh, grasping and turning your door knobs of using a chopstick. It really different skill set that we need to train in order to regain different function. So uh, because of high repetition, sometimes to do it manually by a person at the site all the day, is actually very tiring sometimes, uh, very costly. If you wanted to have a physio beside us every day, it may not be so feasible for us. So that's why uh, robotics technology come in uh, in order to help the therapist to provide the patient with more intensive training for specific movement. And this is some of the robots in the market. They are great. So I will be going to share with you in the next few slides on the clinical evidence on what is a, um, the evidence have been around. Actually, robotic technology is not new. It has been there for the past 20 to 30 years. And in the past 10 to 10, 10, past 10 years, and been quite popular in other countries, in overseas, especially in the US, Europe, uh, Switzerland. Um, now we are bringing more, uh, in Malaysia, we do have it's just a little bit uh, only available in uh, big hospitals. So we, we can see from the clinical point of view in the clinical evidence. This is one of the example. So Amando is one of the Switzerland robot for finger trainings. They are using 20 sessions of uh, treatment for four uh, weeks continuously, five days a week. And they can see some improvement on the fugal main assessment, box, block test, etc. The right side, you can see that there's, uh, there's also a uh, 18, they, they do a test on 18 years old of stroke patient with nine years of stroke. And using the hand robot itself, 15, after 15 sessions, five weeks uh, with three times per week, they're able to see some improvement. So it shows that actually robot able to provide uh, improvement even though for uh, acute stroke or even chronic stroke, which is after uh, one year and above. And this is some of the other clinical evidence as well. You can see the improvement in hand function and upper limb function after 20 sessions of robot assisted training. Uh, the right side is uh, Oxford Academy. Uh, this, they also mentioned, you can see from left, uh, this is the pre-therapy, then after robotic therapies, you can see the activation of the brain. There's some changes on that. And it shows improvement in hand model function after chronic stroke. This is a three week therapies of the robot every day. So, and US itself, FDA also actually recommended uh, robotic therapy to be included inside rehabilitation process. 
So in Attacker itself, we also have we also have robotic devices uh, in house, and this is some of the robot. Uh, this is CR2 Haptic is one of our robot. We tested in uh, this is one example, seventy years old, six month post stroke patient. We do an eighteen session of treatment for six weeks continuously, three times a week. week right? So um, I'm in I'm in testing in some other uh, robot as well. So we build in this. Uh, this is actually one of the robot for risk training. You can see we are using virtual reality trainings to do the risk pronation supination training as well as the uh, holding grasping function. And after six weeks of trainings, we can see that there's an improvement on the hand function. The patient actually start to have able to do opening activities. We can see from here in data point of view, we can see that from first week to six weeks, we can see the third week we can actually start to achieve pronation in the active range of movement. And the fourth week we can see actually we start to achieve the healthy range as well. Okay, so I will move on. So the key advantage of the robot is a uh, high repetition. Uh, we able to provide high repetition of the training. And that is, that is how we can actually fasten the recovery. Or the things is, uh, is actually quite costly as well for uh, home usage. And that's why in Malaysia itself, we only have a big hospital able to afford the robotic devices. That's why we start to explore in a hand robot for uh, home usage. HR30 that we have been started helping patients in Malaysia as well to do the trainings. So I'm going to share with you on this, um, how it looks like. Can I see my screen? Yes, and also there is music also good. So that is how it looks like for the hand robot. And, and the purpose of this hand robot is to help to support every stage of our hand trainings. You can see from first stage, we're able to use a uh, massage therapy for stretching exercise. And then we move on to the second stage, we can use a uh, continuous passive movement, the CPM training, and the mirror therapy to use for movement-based exercise in order to initiate the movement. Then we move on to the functional exercise whereby we can actually uh, customize different kinds of uh, finger trainings for different kinds of functional movement that we want. Later, I'm going to show you how it looks like. And then later stage also, we can strengthen our hand by using this robot as well, whereby we can resist the movement to increase the muscle strength of our uh, hand. And so the unique advantage is able to, uh, most of the time, the robotic may be, uh, the advantage of the hand robot is able to support the hand training at different stage at home settings. Because current most of the robot most probably able to, only able to apply in the clinical setting. That's the advantage of the robot is able to be applied in the home setting while supporting the range of hand training stage. So um, the, the unique thing is uh, this thumb opposition training is actually one of the important uh, exercise that normally we will do for the hand trainings. And this, why thumb is important? Because without thumb, we're not able to do much of the trainings uh, function. And this is contributing to 40 to 50% of our hand function. So later, I'm going to show you how we can train the thumb opposition trainings. This is, I'm going to share with you some of the case study that we have on the hand movement trainings. And this is a patient of a 50, 50 years old, four year post stroke patient. And you can see um, uh, in a initially very uh, stiff in the beginning, four years of post stroke. And then uh, she start to use the trainings with the robot together with some stretching exercise as we guided uh, by our therapies. And then slowly, 
after uh, some several trainings, then we can start to see some improvement on the thumb movement. Eh? You can see here then after several training and she actually she actually just did four times she told me when uh, I talked to her and then uh, after four times of training slowly able to start to get some movement after four years of uh, post stroke and uh, he, she's very excited and uh, she's still using it today uh, so the next I'm going to share with you a uh, next case study so this case study I'm going to uh, the purpose is where we can see that from very high stiffness I can actually uh, with proper exercise and the trainings, we can guide the patient in order to release the sickness and then get the movement. All right. So uh, case study two, also on the hand movement, you can see before that the patient not able to move the index finger uh, effectively. So it's a little bit hard for them to open for this patient one and a half year post stroke using the robot itself together with some exercise focusing on that particular movement, we can slowly see the movement become better after the trainings. This takes about uh, a few weeks for the patient to can see the, the, uh, the improvement. And slowly we did not stop there actually. As the purpose is we, the aim is to go back to the hand function. So you can see from here, uh, the patient able to, we continue the training, able to open faster, and then we strengthening up the arm in order to do a function, we need to have our arm, elbow, and the hand function at the same time. And this is how it looks like after the training combination. He's able to start to do some functional movement, for example, like drinking pattern. We are training drinking pattern in order to, uh, and, and this is just one of the function training. So you can see the concept where I want to go bring you through is, in order to train for hand movement, normally we need hundreds of repetition. But for arm, we also need a few hundreds of repetition. If we are doing by ourselves, may be very difficult at the same time. So the purpose of robot is to help us to support our hand training. At the same time, we can do by ourselves combination. Then we can get the response uh, and the improvement faster. Th that is the advantage of the robotic trainings. Right, the third case study is a uh, 70 plus years old post stroke, six month post stroke patient. And you can see here the before, uh, before that, the patient not able to move much on the hand. And slowly we guide him on how to use the robot based on his current stage. This is one of the exercise on the mirror trainings. And then we included with some uh, continuous passive movement trainings. Slowly, we can start to see some movement initiated. Okay, so why why you may you may ask why I do robot repetitive training? I can get the movement, right? It's, this is because the reason being is uh, when we're doing passive movement, we are installing the memories on our joint, and then with our visual looking at our hand, we also try to instill the memory to our brain that our hand can move in this function. So when when time goes, the brain will believe and sending the right signals to the hand and slowly we can get back the movement, but it will take time. All right. So then we move on to improve the function and slowly we can start to have this, uh, uh, like for example, drinking water, etc. So this is some of the movement. Then we move on. Let's say uh, this is initially we, we doing, let's say if you want to do a pick and place training, Initially, he's not able to do so. Then we combine with robot training to enhance the finger movement. All right. Together with active exercise, we can start to see some active movement on a full functional training. Of course, it won't go until like a natural human movement. But the key is repetitive and consistent training is the key in order for us to regain back our function. But here I'm trying to show you that it's possible for us to move from not able to have that function, but with consistent training and the right method, we can actually regain our hand function with a combination of exercise. And this is uh, uh, another example. For example, let's say if you want to regain the function of the chopstick, you can try to imagine in order to do a chopstick movement, we need shoulder elbow strength as well as our finger training, right? So at the same time, we need to strengthen this at the same time on the finger itself. So for the robot, we can use the tripod grabs movement. And then after 
After that, the patient will start to understand, the brain will start to understand, ah, I can move this movement. And then we need to do that exercise to enhance the brain signal. Slowly, the patient will be able to use in a combination movement. Of course, this is done with a few trainings before we can see some movement like this, All right? And just a declares, uh, disclaimer that this is a hand training device. It's not a medical device to treat uh, the disease directly. It's the, the improvement is really depends on each of a person's condition and the training uh, compliances, all right? So uh, with a robot is uh, useful for the patient, but without a trainer, actually sometimes you may, the patient, you may not sure what to do when you get the robot, right? So don't worry, uh, we have all these video guide and user guide. At the same time, we also provide you one, uh, we have a one month training program uh, guided by our therapist and me, myself, rehab specialist, rehab robot specialist. So we. At the same time, we guide the patient based on their progress within the one month trainings. So in order to, for you, within this one month, you will be able to see how to use the robot by yourself at home, at the same time, guided by the therapist, uh, physiotherapy trainings. And we found out this is uh, very useful for the patient, especially during the pandemics, when uh, we are not able to physically go to visit a physiotherapist uh, due to MCO. Uh, with tally technology, we are able to help the patient uh, actually. So this is some of the therapist feedback as well. Uh, after 10 minutes, my patient able to do some finger extension. So usually after doing many repetition of passive movement, they are not able to see some obvious finger extension. Right, so uh, one of the, our training is a mirror training whereby we use a good hand to activate our weak hand. And this is actually useful for help to re reconnect the brain using the good hand to trigger the weak hand movement, help in the brain relearning. And this is not created by us actually, is uh, the concept have been there around for many years and been used in other countries and been proven in the clinical uh, study. So we also get many good feedback from family members as well. Uh, this is a three years post stroke patient. I just got this feedback last week. They have been doing this daily uh, two times uh, do a stretching and then they see the index finger more flexible that is a good result very fast why very fast because uh this patient have been doing first year i think she did the uh, uh, trainings uh, but not able to see uh, uh much so he stopped the training actually then uh and we guide them we think that uh it's very important to step by step to improve we guide them on that together with the robot we can actually see the progress because that is the purpose of robot, uh, robotic training to enhance the intensity of the training in order to see the result faster. Other <clears throat> so why robot trainings? Of course, now we for sure physio training is important. Uh, normally, we will go to three times a week, 100 repetition per time. So in one week, we can do 300 repetition. And the purpose of physio is to guide us as a whole to improve uh, patient performance. But what if we have a robot home as, at home in order to maximize our training for specific movement on our hand? Because remember, the hand will take the longest time in order to recover. If visual, visual normally we were focusing on uh, some specific components starting from lower limb walking and slowly undo hand function. So by using robot, you are actually helping the therapist at the same time to fasten the recovery for your hand before they can do intensive training on the hand. So you can prepare yourself with intensive training. This is about more than 20 times of training repetition. And the good news is it's only 11 ringgit 50 cent per day in average for a one year usage. And you can use more than a year for maintenance of the hand exercise. So why robot training today is where without physiotherapy, you can see from the graph here, without physiotherapy, of course, in the initial, we can still improve a little bit, but after that, we will be stagnant. And that's why you can see with physiotherapy, especially during the six month golden period, we can see a lot of improvement for the patient uh, along the journey. That's why a uh, patient is recommended to do physiotherapies uh, to regain the function. But what I'm trying to say is uh, there's a limitation where when we are humans coming in, we we may not able to go until the extent of high intensity training that we may need for the best recovery. 
So because of the technology now, the advancement of the technology in 2021, uh, we able to have hand robot at home with Tally Rehab together combined with your physiotherapy together. And we believe and be able to see that patient able to recover and see movement faster in these uh, techniques. So that is my last slide. And uh, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, this. We're going to features in uh, TV2 uh, next Tuesday as well, just to share with you all in uh, Facebook TV2, Saruran Best as well. So in case if you're interested, you can look it uh, in the documentary there. All right, Dr. Yong, I'm, uh, I'm done with my presentation. Uh, Excellent. So you're going to do a demo. Huh? Before that, wow, I mean, you're going to become a celebrity, is it? Next Tuesday, you're going to have a documentary on the story. <laughs> what is it going to about, about this uh, TV2 story? Yeah, it's, it's about uh, the, the journey of uh, how it started and how robot actually can help the patient uh, along uh, after the stroke. Yes. Okay. Excellent. I mean, if you have time on Tuesday, 12.20, Please uh, watch a TV too. Uh, you're going to see Kang Seng to give a few talks. Uh. So Kang Seng, before you go to the demo, uh, just one quick question. Uh. I mean, you've been sure. doing this for the last uh, many, many years. Uh, and then you have been traveling around the world as well to the US, Germany, UK, Japan, and Singapore. I'm sure that you have seen a lot of other robots first-handed, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, can you share some of the experience you have when you, you try all these uh, very, you know, high-end uh, rehab robot? And, and compared to what you're going to show later, what are the different and whatnot, yeah? Understand, Dr. Yong. So I've been, I've been in around, uh, I travel in Malaysia itself, I travel to over 10 to 20 rehab center in the past. Also, I travel to Korea, Thailand, uh, UK, France, uh, Italy, uh, Japan. And I tested, I tested the rehab robots, uh, very advanced robot, Da Vinci and all this. And realize the technology is great, it's just wonderful. Uh, the thing is, is still the question is very uh, expensive at some point and still not able to um, benefit as much as people that at home who we, we, we need the most. So uh, yes, big hospital may be able to afford it, but uh, the purpose I think, uh, the, why I'm doing this, I think because of that, I, we need someone to look into that on the home-based robotic training solution. That's the purpose of tech care in bringing solution to more closer to the people. Thank you, Kang. So I think I still I remember, remember I saw one robot is about more than 500,000 euro to where the robot it took about 30 minutes, train one hour, then the takeoff is already 30 minutes. So it's not really optimized. But again, the robot itself can do many wonderful stuff. Like, just that if you want to look into decentralized services, then we have to look for more portable, compact solution. Like. Okay, why don't Kang say you show the demo maybe I mean, time is running short. Maybe you present like five to ten minutes about the product. Maybe I think they want to see the real stuff also. Sure. Yes. Right. So let me adjust my camera now. Okay. I do a quick one on this. Right. So this is a hand glove. Right. And then this is a mirror glove. I'm going to. This is also. Uh, this is the controller. Right. I'm going to turn on. And then there's a air valve. To wear the glove, it's very simple. It's like a normal glove, and then I just wear it accordingly. But what if the patient hand is stiff? Okay, so as I mentioned, it really depends on. Let's say if they are stiff, uh, we will be we will be guiding them to relax the muscle first by using the massage uh, glove. Later, I'm going to show you, and some uh, stretching exercise to combine before they can start to use this robot glove. All right. So I start with this robot glove first. Okay, now I'm wearing this and then I will start to have a play. All right. Okay, here, now this robot is actually following our neutral hand movement powered by the air pressure. The purpose of air pressure is uh, is safe if anything else uh, go wrong, it won't affect anything. So, and if our hand is very stiff, it won't force our hand to overcome our range of movement, right? All right. So, okay. in the engineering world, we call it is compliance, uh, so that it won't hurt the uh, patient. Yep. Yeah. So we start with let's say if we are able to, our hand is not stiff. We we then the first thing we're going to do in the first two weeks to one month, we're going to do this basic uh, CPM training three times a. Uh, 
we will recommend three times a day, 20 minutes per session. And let's say we move on, uh, have some movement already slowly, we also can start to incorporate a mirror glove exercise. I will stop here. So this is a mirror glove where we can wear on our hand. There's a sensor inside, a simple sensor inside, right? In order to trigger our the, the movement. So it's very simple. What we need to do is to, to focus on the two hands. We will ask the patient to do close, play, close, and then the hand will close. Open, close, open, close. So the, the purpose of this is to, we want the patient to use the good hand to trigger. Because some patient actually they have, they may not understand how to close the hand by themselves after the brain injury. So this is one of the tools or uh, uh, I, I can say one of the techniques that we can use to help the patient to slowly understand their movement. All right, and let's say if you wanted to trigger like what I say, combined with different functional movement, I would, for example, the pinching movement, I will able to customize the training and then I can do this. Uh, so I can do a thumb opposition here. You can see here, right? Or I can do different. Like there's a lot of a function that can be used right, to train the movement. So how, how do a patient know what kind of a movement need to be trained over the period of a time? Yeah, um, so we will start with a very simple exercise for the patient. And the, along the one-month training, we will guide them how to do what kinds of trainings based on their progress. And in general, how to do the training is really depends on the function we wanted to do. Uh, the best is get the advice from the physiotherapy or from us. We can advise you accordingly. Uh, yeah. All right. I will move on to uh, the last one is the massage training. Is it okay, Dr. Yong? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's fully powered by battery where we can recharge it and use for three to four hours. So remember the robots that we have in overseas last time 10 years ago now we can hold it on our hand like this and we can train at our bedroom on our bed so this is something that we think is very important because the the better access to the training the faster the recovery for patient All right okay so this is a massage glove okay in order to do use this we put in our hand inside and then we press start. Okay, you can see here the air compression starting from the front slowly to the back. Okay, so this is what we call sequential compression therapies. We have been using it for leg therapies, for upper limb therapies. So this is using it at here for our hand and the wrist uh, stretching and uh, muscle relaxation. So the purpose is to improve the muscle sensory as well as to improve the blood circulation. So a lot of patients sometimes when uh, we are not using our hand after the stroke, our hand will be facing downwards. And because of that, our fluid, the body fluid will move to our hand and our hand will become bigger in size. So you can ask the patient, you can, you can see that left and right side may be a little bit different size. That's probably because of the edema. So by using this, uh, compression techniques, we have seen a uh, good improvement for the patient with edema. And patient tell us, my hand is become smaller. And then we try to ask them, you can check your another hand actually is normal because it's just because of stroke, our hand become edema. And this hand, is why important to reduce the muscle stiffness is because remember, that is the first stage of the recovery. If you do not reduce the muscle stiffness, how can we go back, go to the next stage, right? So the good, uh, the unique of this robot is able to con uh, support different stage of recovery along the journey. Yeah. All right. Great, Tang-san. I, I have a lot of pressure coming in already. Maybe I'll ask the first one. 
Sure. I mean, just now you use a robot to do the massage and to move the hand. Right? I mean, will the patient depend on the robot if you are using such technology? Are they going to, you know, continue relying on the robot to move a movement? Uh, that's a very good question. So, um, the robot purpose is to help us to uh, initiate the movement. Initiate the movement. So, it's important for the patient to combine with active exercise. Take, for example, if we wanted to do a opening and closing of movement. So normally the exercise we will suggest to the patient is after they do the robot training, they have to take up the robot and do the training by themselves actively. So with this, they will start to have, when they have start to have the function, they will need to, uh, then they won't dependence on the robot itself. Okay, thanks for the answer, Kansai. So another question from Prasanta say that if the patient having poor cognitive level, I mean, how does this robot help in on their recovery? Maybe, for example, Dr. Flex said, muscle power is completely zero out of five. And uh, so first is a cognitive, cognitive level man means a uh, patient do not understand uh, the instruction. I have that patient just now, uh, I mentioned, I get the feedback last week. Uh, the patient actually do not understand, do not understand the uh, instruction. So, um, uh, that is very important for the caregiver to provide the guidance and help them to do the trainings. So the patient actually is a very high stiffness. So we help uh, with guidance from uh, our side we, to the caregiver. They relax the stiffness and slowly. Um, it's sometimes it's uh, really different uh, based on the therapies actually and the patient condition. But uh, mirror therapy is one of the training that we can use in order to help the patient to understand what they are doing. Regarding on the flexibility question, uh, even though faster power is zero, is still okay, able to use, because that is the first stage of the recovery. And with, at that stage, we, will, we can use the continuous passive movement in order to do passive movement, range of movement, so that they can start to instill the memory when, uh, before the movement comes, yeah. Okay, thanks, Consen. Uh, I have a very famous question being asked many times already. How much is this machine? You want to answer now? Answer maybe you can answer briefly. How much is that? Yeah. Um. The the normal price of the robot is four thousand five hundred per set for the whole robot, together with the tally training programs. Uh, currently, we are actually giving a uh, offer promotion during the MCO. Uh, we are selling at three thousand eight hundred ninety nine ringgit. So if you are interested, you can talk to our fan page or contact our, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Next question from Sean Lee said that, are there many sold to rehab center at the moment? Who are the main buyer of this robot at the moment? Actually, uh, we have we have therapies, we have, we have a therapist, house call therapist buying it. We have a visual center buying it. We have patient buying it. So I can tell you, um, uh, actually, uh, the this uh, is uh, for patient may be most useful for the patient. So therapist, yes, is useful um, as well. But I would suggest therapist is more to understanding the technology. The idea that we would like to suggest the therapist is when patient is meeting us, meeting paid therapist, they can do a lot of trainings, right? Other than the robot therapist. So normally I would suggest, uh, therapist would suggest the patient to buy the robot to do the specific movement that they need at home. And then by the time we meet, uh, meet them, the therapist meet them, you can already do different kinds of exercise that uh, you wanted to do. So uh, with this combined effort, we believe uh, we can able to see faster progress for the patient. Yeah, thanks for the answer, Kang I think the, earlier in your presentation also shows some of the case study. Like, I mean, they are actually your end user customer. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you share that how they actually come to you and bought these devices? I mean, they have the case one and case two, I mean, 50 years plus, and of course, during MCO, I mean, we can all walk everywhere. So how <laughs> do they know you and then, I mean, know the product and buy and eventually, you know, uh, you guide them to use the devices during this uh, MCO? Understand. Um, it is now because of MCO, we, we are moving online. So our online page, uh, you can reach us at emails, uh, reach us at uh, WhatsApp or Facebook. So we provide uh, virtually tally uh, consultation for them, how they reach us online, and then we provide training, virtually meet them, and then yeah, uh, explain in details on how it looks like. 
then uh yeah so one of the customer they they saw our webinar because uh they they don't really understand about the robot before meeting us and because after the webinar they really understand and think this is helpful so uh because of the webinar she understand and she approaches after that yeah okay uh good point so i think even though it's mco i mean we can still use a v uh virtual connection to get the product across and also to guide them and there's another two more questions from Sean Lee. The next one is, do you have other show rehab bro, uh, product? I, I mean, you did present just now. Maybe Kang say you can just quickly present again what other product that you have in the line. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe I present the slide or... No, no, no I, don't, I think so you right. can just speak because time is a bit running out. Sure, sure, sure. You can go, go to our website. We actually have a balance training devices. It's called Feebot. It's a virtual reality balancing trainings. Uh, we have uh, have different modules suitable for different levels of balance trainings. We have also have the wrist robot. The wrist robot, uh, just now I mentioned to you, we have been uh, using for wrist and forearm trainings for the stroke patient. Yeah, yeah. and Thanks. others, yeah. yeah. So I think you can uh, just check on the website. Uh, we have developed our own technology from Kang Sang, the team, and also we also source from third party so that we can reach more audiences. Like. And then the question is, why is this product not a medical device? Oh, uh, okay. This device is intended for exercise. Hand exercise. Um, uh, so if it's a medical device, because a uh, medical device, we may need to claim it able to treat some disease, etc. So in this case, we did not claim as a medical device. In short, it's like uh, hand exercises devices so that we can help to improve or uh, do the training for our hand. Okay, uh, I think for answer this question also, if you want to get a medical device, I think we need to do a proper clinical study and it will take some time and investment. So that will increase the price also, like, unfortunately. But of course, I think uh, now Malaysia government is actually trying to support this initiative. Uh, Take Innovation actually working with some organization to do some proper clinical study and hopefully we get, get this uh, MDS certification. Now. Okay, thanks. By the way, uh, just to add on on that, we are working with uh, Cheras Rehab Hospitals. We're working with uh, um, CRC Clinical Research Center Malaysia. We are supported by KKM, uh, Mosti, uh, MDDC to, to help us on that. So we are actually working on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Hassan. So this question from Harif, uh, I hope that I can get the answer across Harif. correctly. The massage groove, my hand will be on first position each time I want to start with the massage session. How can I solve this? Do the massage treatment be effective even though I continue the session with my hand on first position? Uh, Do you I understand the question? <laughs> uh, Harif, I think I, 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 I probably know who you are. Uh, we can talk personally, then I can advise you accordingly. So for the massage, probably uh, I may need to understand what is the current condition and then, yeah. Okay, All thanks. Right. Later, Kang say you talk to you can, so, Yeah, you can talk to me directly, no worries. Uh, how much <laughs> surprise, Dr. Uh, Kang Sao, you mentioned that. How long yes. is the promotion going to last until? Uh, it, actually, uh, the price, the, the promotion, we did not set the limit, but the price may increase from time to time. So like last time we are our customer, last month is 3008. So this month we increase a little bit because of uh, and pandemics and we have some adding value new training session inside so the best suggestion i would suggest you is to try to get as fast as possible in order to save the time for our show recovery thanks Kang sam oh a few more questions here sorry yeah so <laughs> does the robot simulation does the robot simulate the muscle to work or it's just a full assistant device to move the hand oh yeah the 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 robot stimulate the muscles in different contexts so uh, it's not directly stimulated by electrically. So, it, for example, the massage glove is helped to uh, improve the some of the muscle sensory as well as improve the blood circulation. While the hand robot is helped to uh, strengthen stretching the muscles and to regain the movement uh, with repetitive training. So, in the sense of stimulating the muscles, uh, I think in a context where it is in the different ways of stimulating the muscles yeah understand oh, okay i uh, have one kai is actually asking uh the price is it four thousand ringgit how much is it maybe can some let, let's confirm it how ah. much is it that you mentioned just now oh three thousand nine to be 3, exact what is yeah. it included a robot 
So the robot included with a, a controller, the hand uh, martial glove, mirror glove together with the uh, robot glove and some accessory like hand spline. Uh, we have our own customized hand plate in order to guide you to the trainings as well as a one month training programs with uh, our rehab <laughs> robot specialists and our physiotherapists. Okay, I just simply want a summary there, but later maybe Kang Sang, uh, Tech Care will send a more detailed information via the email. So I ask another two more questions. Uh, so Kang Sang, I mean, you show the robot, we know that technology is coming not only for medical healthcare, but for everywhere. Like, we understand that the benefit of it. But I mean, is this robot is a holy grail for the rehabilitation? What I meant is, is this robot going to solve everything? So my question very specific, is there any limitation of this robot, you know? <laughs> understand. Uh, I can tell you for sure this is not everything all in one Ferrari. Uh, uh, the robot is a tool for us to, uh, to help us in some certain tasks. I can't say the robot can help us in everything, right? Um, but the value of the, the robot is able to help us whenever we need it to do the training assist us because if we without the robot we can do yes but we are not able to do as much as we want but with the robot now we can save time save the effort and we can start the training in less than three seconds anytime we want yeah so that is a, the the value of the robot of course physio is still have to be there to guide us as well yeah yeah definitely i think as you all know there's no one product out there that can solve everything like i mean as we in healthcare but uh of course in these cases it shows benefit in a very specific movement on the hand and of course if you use it right set it right and you're going to add a lot of value in the improvement now. so maybe one or two more questions um so this is question can this machine applicable to stroke patient who has lost function over 10 years of duration yeah, I, I, I got this uh, question as well. Uh, the whether we, whether we can improve after 10 years, actually, uh, it really subjective depend on the person condition, whether you do the training in the past 10 years, etc. And but based on our experience and other research, as I mentioned in the slide just now, we have uh, they have patient up to nine years as well can start to can can see some improvement. But the, th the, the things is uh, what we can in general, what we can suggest is the faster we do the rehab, the better the progress we can get. That is that is a general statement that I can I can suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Hang Xiang. So there's a comment from JK said that it would be definitely be beneficial for two patients with low compliance for therapy plan at home. I think that was the. I mean, that is also one of the reasons why Taker is founded. Like we see when you when the patient go back home actually they can do a lot of things but because there's no device that help them so they actually tend to not doing anything so this is our motivation as well so one last question uh, Kang Siang. i mean today we have a lot of physiotherapists also actually today and of mm. course the uh, uh, stroke patient themselves but let's say for the stroke patient uh, for the physiotherapist uh, what is the vision i mean is the robot taking over their job or is it actually helping them in terms of a rehabilitation <laughs> understand no it's definitely will not replace physio 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 knowledge is a very a very complicated knowledge and uh physio is very important in the field where you can see uh within one session trainings uh they are able to provide different kinds of training types uh based on the patient performance so lower limb upper limb etc coordination it's a very complicated environment i mean if you wanted to really dig in down on that so we need physiotherapy really uh, with the knowledge of physio in order to provide the training for the patient. And the tools is where we can help the therapist to focus on some particular training so that we can optimize and faster the recovery of what we wanted to achieve. So let's say Kang Sang now, I'm quite excited to listen to how the physiotherapist and robot going to work hand in hand. Uh. I mean, of <laughs> course, one of the challenges now in we have a lot of uh, stroke patients, a lot of uh, stroke coming up, uh, growing. Yes. Uh, of course, number of physio, we know it's important, but it's not growing to cater the number of stroke patients. So how does this physio and also the robot can work hand in hand together? Understand. Uh, we, we, have a, we already foresee that uh, uh, there will be an increase of stroke cases and we may need a more scalable uh, uh, method in order to help as much as patient as we uh, we need 
So in the future, we can see that robot will be an assistant for the patient to do at home, remotely monitor by the therapist themselves. So therapists can remotely monitor the patient, provide suggestion remotely uh, based on their current condition. And if, uh, for example, if they are they are the time for them to get a physical session where we need manual facilitation, then we arrange appointment to the hospital. But you can see the process did not stop there. It means that they at least do the training at home, go to physio center, come back, they still continue. So that is the continuous training that we are looking into uh, without wasting any time for the patient recovery. Excellent technology. Yeah. So it means that the patient doesn't have to go to the you know physio uh the, the center because it's something take them one hour to reach is a bit uh then they can, they can do at home, and also there's a possibility maybe when you speak about that there's a lot of robot actually in the rehab center. So one physiotherapist have ten or twenty robot then twenty ro uh ten twenty patient actually working together, monitoring each other and of course when you use technology all these data are being collected. Yes. Well, I mean, how long would that be? Is it the next one year or five years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, in the next 10 years, we, um, uh, we, we, we wanted to have that. In fact, now we already have physio center using robotic device, which we are helping uh, physiotherapy to equip with all this robotic knowledge and the technology to be more, uh, to be more uh, capable <laughs> for more patients at the same time. I, I thought you are going to do that as well. <laughs> okay, Kang Seng, and the rest of you, I think we are almost four o'clock. Maybe Kang Seng, one last sentence and one last, uh, you know, suggestion and comment. The last word for the audience today. Um, last word. I I think I think we now it's not a question where whether the robot will work or not work. It's about it's about how we're going to understand the technology and fully utilize for our best recovery. That is what we need to look into to understand the tools that we can use. Yeah. Excellent, Kang Sam. Thank you. So once again, thank you very much, Kang Sam, for this wonderful sharing. And also thank you for all the audience to spend weekend with us. I mean, yeah, it's work from home, although every day is the same, but again, weekend is a weekend, right? Yes. Uh, after today, I think the team will going to send you a feedback form. Just feel free to uh, write it in. And more important is the feedback that what webinar thought that you want to listen. And actually, we can try to accommodate. Lah. Even if we just thought and do a one-time webinar, but to be honest, then uh, we'll be doing this the third time. Hopefully, we're going to do this every month one time. Lah. So but, once, uh, mm, yes, Kang Siang. By the way, just to uh, hang out, uh, we're going to have a next session by physiotherapists, more focusing on the fine motor movement control. Uh, this is mainly useful for Harif, the question. We referred to that question last time. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. I'm looking forward. So there already a line up uh, webinar coming up. So, yep. So once again, thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. And that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.